Finally, a lesson that we can all get our head around. As we noted many, many lessons ago, one of the primary disadvantages of consolidation accounting is that it mashes together all of the operating results for the entire group of companies. This makes evaluating the results of all the various individual businesses challenging, if not impossible. And while the MDNA helps, it's a regulatory driven requirement, which means it really is only a public company reporting requirement. However, GAP itself has provisions to assist the readers in this regard, and that is to require segment disclosures of significant operating segments within the consolidated entity. Don't worry, this lesson will hardly hurt at all after what we've been through. It can get confusing sometimes as to what constitutes an operating segment. Legal entities are often not helpful in this regard as one legal entity can hold multiple businesses, as depicted here. And different legal entities can undertake like activities, such as the hotels division in both ACO and BCO. Operating segments are based on the way that parent corporation manages the component businesses for assessing performance and making strategic decisions. So under IFRS 8, an operating segment is defined as one that is engaged in an active business activity with revenues and expenses, whose operating results are regularly reviewed, evaluated, and used to make resource allocation decisions, and for which discrete financial information is available. Keep in mind that this provision is only a disclosure requirement in the notes to the financial statements. Once we have identified our operating segments, we apply quantitative thresholds to determine which among them need to be separately disclosed. There are three screens applied to identify a reportable segment. If any one of these tests are passed, then the operating segments get separate disclosure. The first test is the revenue test and can be applied by combining, note not consolidating, the revenue from all the segments and calculating a 10% threshold. If a segment has revenue in excess of the threshold, then it's reportable. The second test is the profit test, and here you add up all the segments with profits, and then separately add up all the segments with losses. The higher of these two numbers in absolute terms is used to calculate the threshold using a 10% factor. That is the same as before. Any operating segments with either a profit or absolute loss in excess of the threshold become a reportable segment. And finally, the asset test. Combined don't consolidate the assets of the operating segments and calculate the 10% threshold. Those segments with assets in excess of the threshold are reportable segments. Any segments that fall outside of these guidelines have their results combined under a separate header of other in the segment disclosures. Provided that at least 75% of the company's total external revenues is included in a reportable segment. If this is not the case, then additional segments will be added as reportable segments until the 75% threshold is met. Now let's walk through an example. So here we have our five operating segments. Investment, U.S. land development, hotels, brokerage, and manufacturing. The first column lists the revenues for each business. And note that it would include intercompany activities for the purposes of applying this test. The second column has the operating profits and losses, and the third column, the asset values. The 10% thresholds are calculated. For the revenue and asset tests, it's simply a matter of taking the 10% of the combined total. For the profit test, the threshold is based on the greater of the total of all operating segments reporting profits, and the total of all operating segments reporting losses. In this case, it works out that the total of all profits is greater and as a result, our threshold becomes 1.5 million based on this outcome. So, now we can go through and identify the reportable segments. Applying the revenue test, hotels and manufacturing are reportable. Applying the profit test, investments, U.S. land developments, because of the absolute amount of the loss is greater than the threshold, hotels and manufacturing are reportable segments. And applying the asset test, investments, hotels and manufacturing are reportable segments. 
So it looks like all the operating segments, except for the brokerage business, are reportable segments. As brokerage only represents $9 million of the $100 million of revenue, our segment disclosures account for 91% of the revenues, and thus we need to disclose no further. Now let's turn our attention to the disclosure itself. So here's an example of the segment disclosure for a company I'm involved with. The first paragraph identifies the segments. The second paragraph provides geographic disclosure. The third and the fourth paragraphs disclose how the inner company activities have been reported. Next, we have the operating results disclosed by segment. Notice that the company has three reportable segments, freight transportation, home heating, and investment. The other segment contains a hodgepodge of immaterial business activities and the corporate administration function. The elimination column and the inner segment sales revenue row are very important because these enable this schedule to tie directly to the face of the financial statements. The schedule takes the income down to the income before taxes. Allocating taxes between segments would be a nightmare and is not required. The last row on this schedule discloses the amount of capital spending by operating segment. And lastly, we have segment disclosures for the balance sheet. The assets by segment, with a row eliminating the intercompany balances. The liabilities by segment, with another row eliminating the intercompany balances. Note how they offset. And finally, additional information pertaining to the goodwill allocated between the operating segments, assets located internationally, and investments in associates. While to this point in the lesson I may have implied that segment reporting is pretty straightforward, in the real world preparing this sort of disclosure is a very time consuming and complicated process to prepare and reconcile. However, it's from this information that many companies will in turn draft their management discussion and analysis document. So now you can see how GAAP attempts to address the shortcomings of consolidation. Through the extensive disclosures such as these, you start to get a sense of how each of the operating segments is performing and the level and the nature of capital employed in each of the operating segments. So that's all for this lesson. Don't stop till you get to the top. When you get to the top, don't stop.